But Saul consistently did things his way instead of God's way. And because of his disobedience, God wasn't with him. They were fighting each other. Then they became even more confused and all started running away. Only God could make that happen. Ah, hey everyone, welcome to Children's Church at Base Camp. I'm Tim. Are you ready to climb another mountain with me today? Right now I'm checking all the lights I need for climbing. My headlight, uh, my torchlight, my uh, extra emergency light, and even my phone light, just in case the others run out. And in fact, I also have a candle in case these other lights stop working. That's too many. Are you sure you need all of them? Well, to be honest, I'm a little afraid of the dark. I can't imagine spending a night in a pitch black tent on a mountain. I mean, what if there's something outside the tent? You wouldn't want to be without a light. I mean, if there's a big bear out there, or a yeti, or even something inside the tent, like a spider. Or what if you accidentally lie down on some smelly socks? I'm really afraid of the dark. What about you? What are you afraid of? Thunder, failing exam, coronavirus, being on the stage. Now, we sometimes fear something or certain situations. Fear is a natural emotion, but when fear takes over, you're not able to live life as God wants you to. Now, today we're going to climb Mount Gilboa, where quite a few of the historical battles in the Bible took place. Now, being in battle can be very scary. Do you guys know King Saul, the first king of Israel? When God appointed Saul as king, God gave Saul everything he needed to succeed. But Saul consistently did things his way instead of God's way. And because of his disobedience, God wasn't with him. So on Mount Gilboa, King Saul saw the army of the Philistines and he was afraid. His heart trembled greatly. He was afraid to live for God. And instead of conquering his fear, he allowed his fear to conquer him. So he died a tragic death in battle. He failed to protect his people, failed to honor God, and died in dishonor. What a sad ending. But there was another man who went to Mount Gilboa for battle. His name is Gideon. Gideon lived in Israel. Gideon and the people living in Israel were having a really hard time because the Midianites had taken over the country and were very mean to them. God wanted to use Gideon to lead an army to save the people. So one day an angel called to Gideon, Mighty warrior, the Lord is with you. And the angel told him that God was going to use him to save the Israelites and destroy the Midianites. Now, Gideon wasn't so sure. He wasn't mighty or powerful or strong. In fact, he was one of the smallest and weakest in his whole family. So he couldn't believe it when God told him that he was supposed to lead an army. But God assured Gideon that he would go with him. Now came the time for Gideon to prepare for battle and overcome his fear. Let's hear what happened on Mount Gilboa from Judges 7. Gideon gathered 32,000 men together. Now that was quite a big army. The problem was that the Midianites had an even bigger army with 135,000 men. Maybe if they fought really hard and used lots of tricks and skill, the Israelites could still beat the Midianites. But God had another plan. He didn't think that Gideon's army was too small. Actually, he thought it was too big. So he told Gideon to let all the men who were afraid go home. So Gideon told the men, the Lord says, if you're feeling scared, go home. Guess how many turned back? 22,000 went home. So now there were just 10,000 left in the army to fight the Midianites, all 135,000 of them. Then on Mount Gilboa, Gideon and his 10,000 men camped beside a spring. God spoke to Gideon again, and guess what he said about Gideon's army? It was still too big. God wanted Gideon and all of Israel to know that when God is on your side, it doesn't matter how big the enemy is. The side that God wants to win always wins. 
So the Lord told Gideon to take the 10,000 down to the spring to get a drink of water. Gideon was to watch the men take a drink. If a man knelt down and put his mouth to the water and lapped it like a dog, then he could go home. But if a man knelt and scooped the water into his hand and then put it to his mouth to drink, then he could stay in Gideon's army. Now only 300 men scooped water up to their mouths. 10,000 minus 300. That means 9,700 were sent home. Gideon's army now had only 300 men. 300 to fight against 135,000 Midianites. Gideon and his men knew that only God could help them win this battle. Then Gideon worshipped God. God called out, The Lord has handed the Midianites over to you. At night, Gideon divided his men into three groups of 100. He gave each man a clay jar with a torch inside. He told them to encircle the outside of the Midianite camp and wait until they heard him blow his trumpet. When Gideon blew his trumpet, he and all the soldiers started blowing their trumpets. Then they crushed their clay jars so that it looked like a circle of fire around the camp. They all yelled, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon! All this must have been terrifying for the Midianites. The Lord made them get so confused that they took out their swords and started fighting. But they weren't even fighting Gideon's army. They were fighting each other. Then they became even more confused and all started running away. Gideon's army of 300 beat the Midianite army of 135,000. Only God could make that happen. What a victorious story! Gideon was afraid when God first gave him his mission to fight the Midianites. Yet, he didn't let his fear keep him from doing what God told him to do. As soon as he knew it was God speaking, he trusted God and he went ahead and fought the Midianites with only 300 men. God gave him faith to overcome his fear. But Gideon isn't the only person that God helps to be brave. Have you ever felt like Gideon? Maybe you're afraid of talking in front of your class. Or maybe you didn't think you were good enough to make the football team. Well, no matter what challenges or fears you have, you need to know that God is always with you and he'll be right by your side every step of the way. You don't have to be afraid of messing up because he will always love you no matter what. And he wants to use you for big things, just like Gideon. And we mustn't let fear get in the way of that. We can trust God and put our faith in him. Let's worship.
To Gideon, Mount Gilboa was a place of victory, but to King Saul, it's remembered as the mountain of defeat. Because Gideon wasn't afraid to put his faith in God, God was able to work through him and help him bring victory. So what should you do when you're afraid? Do you let your fear take over you? Or do you trust God and let him work through you even if the feeling is still there? Which do you choose? Trusting God! Absolutely! And can God help us with our fears? Yes. yes! Yeah, and that's a wonderful truth, isn't it? Why don't we pray together? Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonderful story of Gideon and for showing us that with you, even the most impossible situations can result in victory. Even when we're afraid, give us faith to go ahead because we know that you are with us. Where you tell us to go, we will go and we cast out all fear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mighty warrior, the Lord is with you, and he is with you all throughout the week. But as for us here at Base Camp, we'll see you next week.